Let's go, Arkansas Razorback fans. It is okay to be optimistic after a fun spring game where Taylor Green and company put on a freaking show offensively. So a little extra bonus for you today. I've teamed up with our friends at Best of Arkansas Sports to give you some bonus film breakdown and actual written article material, right? I love this play design. Lane Kiffin is the absolute best at this macro concept, which is running plays where the actual blocks of the offensive linemen don't matter okay and what do i mean by that it's a zone step to the left but it's a misdirection play to the right so this play in theory is being blocked and designed for the misdirection to do a lot of the heavy lifting okay and it works every offensive lineman zone blocks to the left even if all these guys to the left side just blew their blocks who cares? It's a run to the right side. Now, you need good blocks here on the right side, and unfortunately, Arkansas doesn't get it. Lucas, I understand what he was trying to do. If he's able to see Isaiah Satania bounce over here, you're sealing the contained defender with the speedster, but that's not what happens here. The player right here, number 18, I believe this is, uh, what is it? Michael something, I, I don't know. Um, he makes a really good play. He cuts to the inside, and he's still able to keep contain, and he meets Isaiah Satania right here, and boom! That's a really well-done tackle right there. Not a great block there by Luke, but I do like the idea, even though it only went for three yards. All right, so for weeks, I've been telling Razorback fans that there is a huge gap between Jaquindon Jackson and every other running back on this team, okay? I got plenty of receipts, including a whole film study, and this run shows you why, okay? We'll get to the dipsy-doodle spin moves in just a second, but where this play actually begins is with the blocking, okay? This is really good run blocking right here from Arkansas, backside guard, going to the second level, and it's the backside tackle getting play side on this DT, okay? So this DT 95 gets sealed, and that opens up this huge cutback lane, okay? And you'll see right here that Anton uh, does a really good job of setting this edge, but it does look like there is a hole right here, but Jaquindon Jackson sees that this hole is closing in. So what does he do? He doesn't immediately just plant and go to this wide open cutback angle. Watch him press this hole, which then opens up the space even more to the inside. So watch him press. Okay, so he's acting like he's gonna go through here, and then boom, he cuts back through here, and he does it with style. Okay, spin move here, and then watch this, spin move there, and then he doesn't go down easy. All right, I'm telling you, his Utah tape is a lot better than people give it credit for. He was very hurt last year, and he's really freaking good. Uh, not good quarterbacking at all. You have a corner blitz coming from this direction. They disguise it really well. Travis Wilson, uh, Travis Wilson, T. Will is a really good blitz disguiser. But really where the mistake is made here and where the play is made is by the guy who will probably be Arkansas's best defensive end, and that's Anton, um, who just blows this right tackle right into Taylor Green's lap. And really it's just nothing Taylor Green could do here except actually step up into this pocket and just find something. And now he's just in a, a bad spot and he's taking a really bad sack. Um so we don't want that, obviously, out of the quarterback. All right, so Taylor Green is sacked, and it's second and smack over here. And, wow, I, I, I cannot tell you how freaking impressive this is from an offensive philosophy standpoint, uh, a film standpoint, an execution standpoint. I understand the coverage is soft, and it's only a three-man rush. But this throw to Varkis Gums is actually the play that we dive into deeper detail with our friends at Best of Arkansas Sports. The link to the breakdown is floating in the top right corner of your screen. I'll also put it down below and only watch it if you're a super diehard football fan. Let's go. All right, once again, it's pistol formation. So a minute ago, you had a really long run on pistol and it's third and four. I love a run on third and medium because you can always go for it on fourth. And this is just a typical zone read play. Now, why do I like pistol formation so much? Because you could zone read it either way. He could flip and go this way or he could flip and go this way and the defense doesn't know it. Okay, 
judging by his stance, you're thinking that it might be a, a more than likely a zone read to the left side, but you really don't know if it's pistol, where if you're in shotgun, it's either got to be, if he was to the left, it's a zone read to the right. If he was to the right, it's a zone read to the left. But that's why I love about pistol is that it does keep the defense guessing. I also love this formation, okay? You have trips to the left with the tight end to the right side. That can really affect a defense's strength call, right? Um, which we won't get into what exactly a strength call is but still it's just really good stuff from Bobby Petrino all right so Talon's job is just to read this backside uh or this play side in if he crashes down or gets a little too tight you want to pull it and this is actually a really good pull read right here by Talon look at how long he holds this in right here and then he pulls that bad boy and look at all this space he has to work with and god that's really good stuff right here by five. I believe uh, that is Broden or Wilson. Either one. That's a good job washing this DB upfield. And I don't know if he's getting tackled right there. Here we go. Let's get to here. Uh, you got trips to the right to the field side. First thing here, let's talk about the protection. This is really freaking good stuff. I mean, ah, that, I mean, is this Arkansas offensive line like actually decent this year? I mean... Um, the Arkansas defensive line will never be one of the better defensive lines you'll see in the SEC, but that is still really good. Second thing here is we won't go through all um, the routes here, but one thing you've seen from Arkansas in practice and just what I've been hearing uh, on campus is the throws over the middle of the field have been a lot better. And that was a good job by Green, seeing that he had a quick Isaiah Satania on a backer, and he took advantage of that matchup, and they ate it. All right, so we get to this second and seven, and my goodness gracious, this is really, really good quarterback play, okay? Um you know, we can get into a debate if this is a true, pure RPO. I don't know. I'm not in that room. Should he have actually handed this football off? Well, if he would have, this could have gone for something. Honestly, you would like to think that he could see this cutback lane right here. Uh, but still, he decides to throw it. And I want you to see this anticipation. I want you to see this ball location, okay? You have your best receiver going up against a corner who struggled quite a bit, Armstrong versus Singletary. And this actually ends up being a decent route, all right? So uh, he has a leverage advantage to your outside, and we're running it out. So we really need some good separation. It is the red zone, so he could just jump all over things a little bit quicker. Look at this ball location from Taylor Green right there high in a way Armstrong has got to catch this I mean it's a tough catch but if you're the number one guy you gotta make that play all right so it's third and seven and once again I just love this formation trips to the right tight end to the left okay uh I I just love it I love flooding one side of the field with players um this is just majestic I mean majestic quarterback play, okay? So, Talon starts off looking to the left, and then he works back to the right side. And you'll see that everything here is actually covered, all right? It's the red zone. Once again, a lot of quarterbacks have a tendency to just tuck and run, especially with Talon's rushing ability, because there are so many guys that are just back right here. But he sits in this pocket, and this is the matchup he ends up liking, okay? But you notice this defender has five sealed to this inside, and we're running a, a, a little dig on the back of this goal line. Watch Taylor Green stay comfortable in this pocket, steps up into the pocket, and look at where he is actually deciding to throw this football. Uh, that's really good stuff. This is not open. We need you to throw him open and watch this ball location. This is called a top shelf throw. Okay, it's a really good lecture by Ryan Day on this. Um, somewhere floating on Twitter. If it is the back of the end zone, every time we want our receiver jumping to catch the football, that is a ball you want to throw high because you got to get it over all these underneath defenders. And it is thrown high to a 6-3 target to where only he can get it. 
Everything else was covered. This is not the absolute worst defense, but an unfreaking believable throw right there by Taylor Green. All right, so let's get to Taylor Green's second drive here. And once again, like the very first play, okay, this is a true freshman Bridges coming on a corner blitz. Notice Bobby makes the adjustment. If you go on a corner blitz, it's an automatic hot to where this receiver just stops and you're just throwing in the direction of it, okay? This is really good offensive recognition by Bobby and the QB, and that's okay if that ball is a little bit high because this corner is going to be jumping a good bit of the time. Now, Broden switched to a single-digit number, and I've always been this way. If you're going to wear a single-digit number, especially number five at Arkansas, I need you to make some plays, and he does. I like seeing guys beginning to break tackles. This was something that Broden didn't do a good job of. Or really, not a whole lot of Arkansas ball carriers broke a lot of tackles last year. Man, that's good stuff. And you see, he's still on his feet. Now, speaking of broken tackles, let's break down this next play from Rashad DeBinion, who I thought overall had a really good day. But there is a reason why. Of his 153 career carries, he only has one carry over 15 yards. And that was in a bowl game versus Kansas where everybody went off, okay? So he gets a perfectly blocked play. Number one, this double right here on this play side defensive end is really good. Patrick Custis, Custis, Bob Custis, whatever, he seals 97 to the inside. That's a very critical block. But everything is just blocked to perfection. This backer takes a bad angle to the inside. So you have a perfect seal. And honestly, the guy that I really want you to focus on here is Gums, okay? So we'll talk about this in uh, the Best of Arkansas breakdown. But he is in here as uh, a tight end slash receiver slash blocker. His blocking last year was very, very, very bad. This is as good as it freaking gets. And I believe that's Lorando Snacks Johnson. That's a starter-level job that he is just punking out right here. That is really freaking good stuff, okay? Now, as awesome as that is, we need a running back that can break a tackle, okay? I know Caleb Jackson at LSU is breaking this tackle. I know... Jaquindon Jackson's breaking this tackle. If you are an SEC starter, single-digit guy going into year three, this has got to be missed. All right, you have five yards to figure out which way you want to go, and if you make him miss, it is off to the races. Instead, you almost do, but you go down. Okay, just not good running back play. All right, so we get to hear Taylor Green. This is uh, a, a very exotic ish play design so it's a play action fake to the right side you as a linebacker could think that this is a pull to the right side but it's actually just a long play action first thing let's take a look at the protection the guard right here i think that's custis uh he just misses anton horribly and it's just as bad as it gets right there you need to get something in there so other than that the protection was really good now let's talk about the actual quarterbacking this is not an easy, comfortable throw to make, but I'll tell you this, Jaden Daniels at LSU lived on this. This is a huge piece of what LSU does, one of the better offenses in all of college football last year, which is just cross-field comeback routes to your best player, okay? It's a long throw. It's from the opposite hash. But I do think, even though I don't have the all 22 here, this ball is late. This corner is kind of on an island right here. And he is obviously going to guard against the vertical. So this comeback is going to be open. I think this ball could have been out. And even if you are throwing this later and a guy is right here in your face, you don't want to take this hit. So in an actual game scenario, what you're going to hope Taylor Green does is with two hands step up into the pocket, reset, and then either throw this or look somewhere else. So this right here is just bad practice in principle um, because that's a strip sack, obviously. So in actual game, you want to step up and find someone. Overall, all things considered, even if I think the ball is late and a little high, that is a ridiculous catch right there by Armstrong. And then look, if... 29 would have totally whiffed. Take a look at this ridiculous balance by Armstrong to 
stay on his feet. He actually had to be brought down there. It's really good wide receiver play. I'm telling you, I, I really do think Anton's a good football player. And I know I've brought this up in other, uh, you know, spring breakdowns that we've done. Okay, he's going up against Luke Haas, who is not the best blocker. He's only a year two guy, more of a receiving tight end. And that is just nasty work to just turn him to the inside. So when you throw him this way, that fills this gap. So Anton knows that. He processes this, sits heavy right here, and just makes this play. It's really good stuff. And he actually whiffs. That's a good job right there by DeBinion, making him whiff. And after DeBinion made that mistake, he's able to squirt through here for a nice game he's actually still on his feet that's a good job by luke you know sticking with the play uh so you just need anton uh to finish it but god that is really good running so good stuff from dominion bouncing back and thank you guys for the super thanks i have a feeling that we're getting a lot of them because this film study has been so freaking fun we're about to break down an absolute dime of a touchdown pass all right so this is two on two right uh, you know, Taylor Green's looking over here. He's like, okay, I got a true freshman corner going up against my best wide receiver. And, you know, it, it, it was a rough spring for Bridges, right? This is the second highest rated player in the recruiting class. And it looks like it's going to be more of a year two uh, type of situation. You know, press man with inside leverage. I like to get physical if, I, if you're going up against a big time player. You know, you open the gate, feet kind of get slow and he's it looks like just slow hips right here and he's just cooked all right this is not an easy throw this one is actually on time and look at this ball placement right here bang good stuff right there and man this is really good offense all right so we move ahead here and uh we'll just do Taylor green today if you want me to do the other quarterbacks uh i will Protection here breaks down. This is a lot of good penetration up the middle right here by 97. And where this play is actually lost is by the backer who loses contain. This is a good job right here by Lucas um, engaging in this block. And if I'm Taylor Green's coach, if there are routes to the right side and they want to blow contain to the right side and that is your throwing shoulder, take it every time because you can run for a big gain or someone get a good open down the field, and Anthony, number 11, does a really good job uh, getting open here, and, and Snacks chases him down. I thought Arkansas's interior defensive line did a bad job of feeling out the running game. So the DT right here, 95, uh, I don't know who that is, just takes a really bad angle here, unless the call was for him to shoot uh, the backside A-gap here, then so be it. But you are this play side A-gap, if anything, we need you to stay in this play side A gap, but you'll see he actually get turns away to the opposite side A gap by the center, 63, who I thought had a really good day. And see how he turns him to this inside right here? That's good stuff. Good job right here by 54. Um, kicking it out this way to open up a wide open hole. Man, this run blocking, where was it last year for Arkansas? I don't know. That is as clean of a hole to run through. And if you're given a clean hole, I need to see some home run hitting ability. And Jackson shows it, right? If the safety does eventually bring you down, at least carry him for an extra 10, 15 yards. And that's exactly what he does there. 15 Singletary after a tough season had a good day. Uh, you know, jump ball situation versus uh, a really talented catcher and Isaac Tesla. Uh, he's not a great separator. Man, that's just really good coverage right there to get it at a size point and bat it down. Should that have just been a back shoulder throw? I don't know. I'm not in that meeting room, but really good stuff. Oh, Jaquinda Jackson's a real deal. I've, I've just been trying to tell you guys for a week. That I'm, I'm not trying to overhype someone. Looking like Raleigh Williams in that number 22 uniform. This is great displacement by this Arkansas offensive line. Look at this push. Look at this surge. And it looks like the hole is right here. But Jackson is smart enough to know that it's going to get filled eventually. So he presses it and once again cuts it back. Waits for that cutback lane to open up. And look at how clean he gets through there. And then on top of that, spins off another tackler. I, I'm telling you, it's just a spring game. But the fact that he's able to score off that is absolutely freaking lutely ridiculous. All right, here we go. Zone blocks to the right side. It's Dominion again. And like I said, Dominion, I thought, overall had a good day. 
Arkansas's DTs with this second-ish unit um, just got destroyed by this Arkansas offensive line. And you're wondering, well, is it the DTs or is it the offensive line? Uh I don't know. Huh? 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 You had an opportunity to make a play to Binion after getting brought down earlier. I'm telling you, Rashad did some really, really good things um, in the spring game after that earlier non-missed tackle opportunity. So this play will also be a part of the best of Arkansas breakdown. Uh, it's floating in the top right corner of your screen. It gets blown dead because Dabinion in pass protection uh, ha has been brutal. Okay, uh, in that Dan Enos offense, he, he missed a few assignments in pass pro. And honestly, that's not the absolute worst because Snacks is never actually making this set snack sack. So you just want to wash him upfield. Once again, where the good block was made right here is Gums. All right, he's going up against Anton. God, that's just, that's really, really, really good stuff. Uh, you know, I don't think that's holding. It looks pretty good. But they blow the play dead. Look at this ball location, though, uh, because they blew the play dead on this sack. Right here, this would have been a hold by this backer. That's a clear hold. Um, does that actually get called in the game? We don't know. So, Taylor Green makes this throw, and once again, we'll break this play down in particular a little bit deeper as a part of our best of Arkansas breakdown. And maybe in an actual game, Luke is laying out and making that play. But Bobby said, look, we're going to try it again. Okay, this time at a pistol, play action fake. Once again, I'm a huge pistol fan. They had a lot of success with the pistol. All right, step up. And guess what? It's practically the same play. This time it is indeed completed right here to um, the great Lucas. And he's beaten this linebacker for a really nice gain down the field. All right, so Taylor Green can look very, very, very impressive. And then things get erratic, right? It is very Anthony Richardson-like. Um, you know, Anthony Richardson in the SEC and in the NFL, um, and I've done a bunch of Anthony Richardson film studies on my NFL channel. That one's floating in the top right corner of your screen. Unbelievable athletic marvels, really talented throwers of the football, but under 60% completion percentage throwers because you could put way too much steam and it'd be high. I mean, look. He's wide open. This does not need to be an absolutely perfect throw. Just put it on him, okay? And looks like there was a lot of weight on that front leg, and, and that ball sailed on him a little bit. But, man, just, just hit him right in stride. All right, so you get uh, the worst coverage bust of the day. Uh, it's either this backer or this backer needs to be on this tight end. Uh, don't know who. And this is a good job by Taylor Green seeing it and – it's just, you know, I, I would highly recommend SEC defenses don't give Lucas all this room to operate, okay? Uh, Bobby Petrino is taking uh, this opportunity to throw wide open to your tight end uh, every single time. A couple of not-so-great things, though, at the end of this play. Lucas has got to make a guy miss. I mean, you just do. That's the next step in his development is being better after the catch, and maybe he will never turn into a true yak monster. The second thing is, in a spring game, why is a safety off of an injury to this player trying to kill shot someone like this? That made absolutely no sense. Helmet flies off. They're going to call you for targeting every time, even if it's not, and you hurt yourself. Uh, probably one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in a spring game, if I'm being honest, but hopefully um, Metcalf is okay. Now, uh, we get to this under center. It's the same principle as a, uh, as a pistol. You don't know which way they're going to go. And, well, once again, this will be part of the best of Arkansas film breakdown okay it's a little pitch to the left side this is a really good job right here by lucas god he had to, i mean that's that's as good as it can get right there and everything is just sealed to perfection i don't know why a defender is wearing a red jersey but he is and uh it's it's a walk-in touchdown there for jaquindon jackson so i think that'll do it for me that film extra breakdown is uh down below i'm telling you taylor green looked really good 
once again, lots of backups out there. It is just a spring game. Um, you know, I know Jaquinta Jackson's good. That really didn't shock me. This offensive line had a really good day. Is Carmona really the answer at left tackle? Is this offensive line um, with Sam Pittman being a lot more involved in the offensive line? Um, is it taking a step forward? But the bottom line is offensively, at the very least, they look a heck of a lot better than they did last year. Defensively, you know, I'll talk more about, you know, the defense when we break down the other quarterbacks. Uh, but let me know if you want to do uh, film studies on that because that defense has more starter level players in my mind. But um, let me know uh, if you guys want to see it, okay? And it! Pow! Ow! SCC! Bell! And tonight, oh, we're doing deep dish pizza. Let's go! Uh, 